Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. We're gonna to talk today about the jobless uh, claims exploding higher after the BLS revisions tech layoffs on 2001 pace. That's the title of today's story we're gonna be going over. And I've been telling you that I expect in the fall to be losing 10,000 jobs a day. Now we're seeing all kinds of things from payroll reports coming out that weren't expected, numbers that weren't expected, they're not as good as what was expected. We're also seeing uh, uh, job openings dropping, right? We're seeing layoffs. We saw a lot of them in January and February, and we're about to start seeing another wave of them again. And now we are seeing jobless claims exploding higher. Now, the fact is the economy is in rough shape, but it is going to get even rougher as the masses understand that we are already in a recession, okay? You can change the definition of a word, but it doesn't change the facts, all right? But the fact is, 90% of the nation has no concept of what is going on right now. They are glued to the TVs watching stupid things like whatever the headlines are, the glitz and the glamour, whatever movie star just you know broke their fingernail, or hey, look at what's going on with Trump right now. Don't, don't mention that literally there's a grand jury talking about the president before him taking money from another country for his campaign. This is literally happening right now, but that's what's going on. There's these lures going left and right, shiny objects. You want to talk about a squirrel moment. There are some really bad people out there that want to do damage, but they are going to literally uh, do damage by showing you something else, some furry little object over here that you're watching while the really bad stuff happens over there. So let's talk about the economy and how bad it is. It says right here, and this is out of Zero Hedge again, after an ugly ISM report data, dismal jolts, soaring warn notices and a weaker than expected ADP print. And sorry for all those acronyms, but those all stand for different types of reports that come out. And the JOLTS report is what we talked about the other day, where the, uh, the job openings number uh, was a lot less, okay, than what was expected. Uh, this morning, Challenger Gray and Christmas report announced a bigger than expected 89,703 job cuts in March. This is up 319% year over year. The West dominated the cuts. Uh, the, with technology sector companies having announced 102,000 cuts so far this year, on pace to surpass the highest annual total for the sector announced in 2001. Now I'm gonna show you a chart really quick here and I want you the highlighted parts are the dot-com crisis, the great financial crisis, and then obviously you see that massive, massive spike when COVID happened, right? Which makes sense. All these people were sent home or laid off and that massive, massive spike. But we need to remember, look at where we are now next to my finger, okay? We are now at a spot higher than the Great Recession. Now, to show you this, I'm going to blow this up. Do you remember when I told you that the crash leading to the Great Recession started in two, mid-2005 and 2006, right? Okay, look at this chart. You see, when we're talking about right here, job cuts, US job cut announcements. Okay, when I told you it started, see the 2005 number right there? Job cuts were normal, right? It was just going along like a normal heart rate, just bop, 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 beating. And then you didn't see the massive job cuts until mid-2008, mid-2008, and they kept going into 2009. Now, where is this, how is this information so catastrophic, so important right now, so in your face that you need to wake up and drop everything you're doing right now and take this extremely seriously. I know I joke around, right? Every once in a while. This is very serious. The dot-com crisis. Let me blow up that part. The job cuts did not start until everything was imploding in the markets. Really? Things were bad. End of 2000 and into 2001. All right? Same thing with the the great financial crisis, the great recession. The massive job cuts did not start until it was literally all over the news, mid-2008. You literally had eight weeks before Lehman collapsed, all right? 
Now, this is how bad it is. When the president of the United States, Jeff Borgen, yeah, you can tell how much I think about this person, right? Says, here's the solution to a recession. We're gonna change the, the, the definition. It's no longer what it used to be, it's this. So then that technically means we're not in recession. All right, now remember, we're not in recession right now. We're not in recession. The world's going by great, even though we're at all-time highs for credit card debt, all-time highs for student loan debt, and mortgage debt is out of control, and, and the velocity of real estate has literally stopped. Get ready, the crash is coming. That's where we are right now. That's where we are right now. Now, think about this. Again, line these three charts up, and you will see, by the numbers, the layoffs right now are worse than what happened during the great financial crisis. If you think for one second that this crash that will be made evident by the end of this year is not gonna be worse than the Great Recession, you are highly confused or on something. And I don't want any part of it. This is not a joke. I remember somebody a couple days ago saying, oh, I'm going to remember you said the 10,000 people by the end of, in the fall. Like, do you, do you not have your eyes open? So many people are losing their jobs right now. Oh yeah, that's going to happen. It's going to happen. This is absolutely insane. Here's a quote. We know companies are approaching 2023 with caution, though the economy is still creating jobs. Andrew Challenger's firm, senior vice president, said in a statement, with hikes, with rate hikes continuing and companies reining in costs, the large scale layoffs we are seeing will likely continue. And I couldn't agree more. The scary thing is, is that rates are not going to go down anytime soon. The Federal Reserve knows two things. We got to maintain strength of the dollar as the world is literally walking away from the dollar right now. We've got to give them some incentive to hold dollars, i.e., a rate of return. The second thing is that we have not, I'm talking about the Fed, gotten control of uh, inflation. Food and energy inflation are soaring right now, and we have to do something about it. So what do we have to do? Break the consumer so they'll stop buying goods. They want you to be unemployed, they need you to be unemployed, and they need you not buying extra food at the store. They need to be able to create it to where now the food places are going, oh, we, we're gonna go to biz, business. If people don't buy our goods, we're gonna go to business. So we're gonna slash prices. But the problem is they gotta slash prices down the chain, the supply chain of whatever they're making. This is catastrophic. This is why I say this is the greatest opportunity. Look around and just what, read the news headlines, normal news headlines, they're not gonna tell you that, oh, what do you mean job cuts are greater than during the Great Recession? How is that possible? Everything's moving on. Because everything's moving right now, lubricated through easy money credit and credit card balances keep going up. Now it says right here, uh, with the BLS lies finally over, initial job claims soared to 228,000. This is the ninth straight week with initial claims above 200K. Post revision, of course. Remember, I've told you over and over, the truth is in the revisions. It is a very easy way to lie. Omit facts. These are the numbers that came out three months later. These are the real numbers that came out that should have came out that day, but we uh, there were some miscalculations or something screwed up. That is a lie. It's a way of lying. And you could appease the masses with your lies at first because no one's going to come out with the revisions and talk about them. That's what I've been talking about every time a revision's out here. This is what's going on, guys. You remember those numbers they, they patted you with back in December? Well, here's the truth. And like I said, we're entering right now the eye of the storm. You are gonna see the dollar strengthen. Watch what happens. In the next couple of weeks, maybe five, six, maybe eight weeks, you're gonna see the dollar strengthen and probably a rally in the stock market. That's not financial advice. I'm not trading this. I'm not trading this because when it flips and we get back into the hurricane, the other side of the hurricane, it's going to be worse. You're going to be walloped. People are going to be smashed. So you're going to see things like the dollar gets stronger. Probably gold and silver will sell off paper price. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, physical because so many people are trying to buy it right now. The actual physical supply is getting tight. You're going to see 
uh, the stock market probably increase, you'll probably see crypto increase for the time being. That's not tradable. I'm not buying any of that stuff, just so you know. I'm even holding back on the stocks I'm buying right now because I'm getting ready for the wallop. So now, this is the things, these are the days that you need to wake up and watch what's going on. So it says, below, they zoom in on a chart. No, let me, sorry, I, I ju jumped ahead. Some context for the recent adjustments that we're talking about. Last week claims came in at 246,000, which was revised massively from 198,000. So where they told you they were 198,000 jobs lost, it was actually 246. On a percentage basis, that is massive. This week before, the week before, that was 247,000, which was revised from 191. Again, on a percentage basis, that's what, over a 25% increase in the numbers. This, they'll say, oh wait, 191,000 jobs cut. Nope, sorry, it's 247. Here's this, the week before that, it was 192,000, right? Now, now look at, oh man, these little, okay, look, look at this, three weeks of data. First week, they said 192,000, right? Second week, 191,000, right? Then the third week, 198,000. So one week they dip a little bit and they juice the markets. Look, jobless claims you know, were 192 last week, now they're 191, so it's getting better. Juice of the markets. Then the next week, 198, ugh. Here's the real numbers in the same order. 230, right? Then 247, then 246. We are talking massive numbers and this is very serious. By the fall, you are going to see a point in time where we're going to be able to go, look, there's a two week, 30 day, 60 day period, 10,000 jobs a day lost. Just in the companies that are announcing. We're not even, you're talking about just the news that I can grab. I'm talking about just the news, the massive layoffs that are coming. You're going to see this and it's going to be longer than a month or two, honestly. So what's scary is that under the hood, check this out, Michigan, Massachusetts, and California saw the biggest jump in jobless claims, while Indiana and Tennessee saw the biggest drop in claims. So that's great. But you got Michigan, Massachusetts, and California. They were the biggest drop. Finally, we note that having decoupled from reality for six months, the labor market is now rapidly catching down to soft surveys sad reflection of the state of the economy. And that is true. We are literally seeing a divergence happening right here. Check this out. This is the uh, Bloomberg US Labor Market Surprise Index, which is in green. And then the Bloomberg US Surveys and Business Cycle Indicators. Look at the divergence right here on this chart. It's completely separating. The surprise an indicator showing that what analysts said and then what really happened and how much more of a surprise. You see all of the people that were trained in college and then go to work for a company that have a fancy name badge and a fancy office and you think they're really smart but they have the authority to tell you what's really going on are consistently wrong. What's scary about wealth creation is it's very, very normally, it's easy, it's, it's a no-brainer. You don't get into debt that you can't service. You should only get into debt if that debt makes you money. You continue building assets. You bring in cash flowing assets, uh, investments that pay you money, not speculative bets like betting on Tesla stock that doesn't pay you a dividend. You're just betting that they're gonna do something that's gonna go up. It's literally a bet. Or even if you bet to the downside, you're short. It's a bet, right? We need things that are solid. Billionaires weren't made by speculation. They were built by or made by cash flow. And that's what's very important to understand. Excuse me, this is an amazing opportunity, guys. And people need to wake up to what is really happening in this world. The economy is collapsing, prepare now. And then enjoy the benefits of being ready, being prepared and not scared. All right, guys, that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.